Hi, I'm Bruce Chard, host of the Bonefish School here at Andros South in the Bahamas. And uh, today I'm going to show you some really cool techniques on how to tie a superior bonefish leader and why I believe this leader is uh, superior to others. And uh, I'm sitting out here uh, at the Slack Tide Bar right at Andros South Lodge right on the beautiful beach. What better place to uh, talk about bonefish leaders? So first of all I'm going to talk about the material that I've chosen to use to tie my leaders. Uh, I personally like the uh, Rio Alloy Hard Saltwater Tippet material. It's uh, stiff, ties really nice knots, and uh, creates a nice transition of energy all the way to the fly from my fly line. And then at the very end, we're going to break that down from uh, 30 pound to 25 to 20 to 16 to 12 and then to a tippet of some Seaguar Grand Max fluorocarbon uh, 18 pound all of which are three tenths of a diameter smaller all the way down so we're going to create a tapered leader that is going to be in equal portions of the entire leader each piece Therefore, transitioning energy nice and smoothly all the way to the fly. It's like a continuation of your front taper of your fly line. And uh, most leaders that you can buy are made out of soft monofilament and they extrude them with a knotless taper. And uh, I personally feel that it's very soft monofilament for using uh, in saltwater applications. Uh, you, need, you need a stiff, hard uh, monofilament leader and with a fluorocarbon tippet to help increase your odds of laying a fly out straight and getting bonefish to eat. So I'm going to start out with some 30 pound, 30 pound reel first. I'm going to, I'm going to stretch it out, create some heat, And we're gonna let, let it straighten out nice. And I like a surgeon's loop or a perfection's loop at the end is, is fine, whatever you like to do. Two turn surgeon's loop is just fine, in my opinion. And this will give us our base to start our leader from. And again, I just personally like to do a little arm's length of tippet every time. So that's approximately two, two and a half feet. By the time I'm done tying each section, it shrinks down, of course. So now I'm going to tie some 25 pound to, to the 30 pound after I straighten it here a little bit. The heat that builds up between my fingers when I do that helps to get all the kinks and memory out of the mono. Okay, now I I'm going to share with you the way that I like to tie a blood knot and connect my pieces. I'm going to connect it 30 to the 25 with, with a four turn blood knot on either side. They're very heavy monofilaments, both of these, and they're hard to cinch up, so a lighter number of turns is key. Um, I like to start the knot by having my tag stick out down below and creating a big gap between my fingers, and I pinch. The two uh, lines coming together with my index finger and my thumb and I create a gap right here so I can put my finger through there. I'm going to keep that gap open and wide because that's important for my next step. I'm going to then start to wrap the tag from the thick end, the 30 pound, around the standing line of the 25 pound. And I'm going to start the wraps by wrapping loosely and before I do that I'm going to lube both pieces with my mouth. And then I'm going to lick my finger and my, th my thumb as well. What that's going to do is when I roll these pieces together while I keep this section fat here because I've separated with my fingers, I'm going to roll them loosely. And while I roll them, I, I roll them in between my lubricated in index finger and my thumb, creating lubrication the entire way. Lubrication on every step of this knot is crucial to making the knot seat up correctly and therefore being ultra strong. <clears throat> so now I'm going to take this knot, this, this tag end that I wrapped around and come up underneath the back side 
of the 25 pound tag and create a separate tag that's going to stick straight up in the air. Okay. Now I'm going to lubricate the next section and do the same knot going the opposite direction. Notice how every time I grabbed it with my teeth, I lubricated it with my tongue again. Now I'm going to come back through the same hole that this knot, this tag has come up through and go down the other direction the opposite way. Okay. I'm going to grab the two tags together, my teeth, and just give it a little bit of a pull. And then the line is going to be able to, the tags will, will come out of both sides of the knots opposite, which will show you that one knot was tied this way correctly and the other knot was tied this way correctly. Most line-to-line -line knots are jam knots where you pull tight and the knots come together and jam against each other. That's where they get their strength. So here's the key, I think, to tying this knot. Is I have a, a cup full of water here and I'm going to dip this in the water and totally submerge the entire knot in liquid. That allows the entire knot to cinch up really nice and smooth, just like that. So <clears throat> now you know your knot is tied correctly when both tags are sticking out at completely opposite ends. If they both stick out the same end like this, then you know that you tied both knots the same uh, instead of the opposite direction and therefore you might have a, a weak connection there. You might have to retie your, your leader. So I'm going to do this same connection on all my pieces. So I'm going to go now from the 25 because I have 30 to start out going to 25 and I'm going to drop down to 20. The lower the poundage of the monofilament, the thinner the mono, the less you have to heat it up with your fingers. So this is pretty pretty nice here. The uh, Now I'm going to do a four turn from my 25 and a five, pound, five turn from my 20 because we're getting into some lighter line. Okay, loop it. I'm going to kind of burn through this quick. Four, come up. I'm going to do five turns on the 20. Grab the two together, dip it. Done. I always tell all my anglers at the school, it's very important to learn how to tie your own leaders because wherever you go fishing, you might find yourself by yourself fishing or uh, with a guy that might not know how to tie a leader up for you correctly. Or uh, most of all, this way you can con construct your own leaders the way you like them personally. Probably the most important part. So now I'm going to go to 16. So I have 20 to 16. So I'm going to go five turns on the 20 and six turns on the 16. Lubrication is very key. Loose wraps. That helps to keep everything lubricated inside. dip. Doesn't take long once you practice this a little bit. Pull When you pull your knots together, pull them together smoothly and with even power and with no jerky applications of power that will create a nice smooth transition of power right into the knot. Now we're going to go with the 12 pound. All my sections are equal length. This creates the perfect taper all the way to the fly, therefore transferring the energy very nicely. So now I have 16 to the 12, and I'm going to go 5 with the 16 and 6 with the 12. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There you go. Okay, almost done here.
We're going to tie on the uh, Seaguar Grand Max 18. Now just, just so you guys know, on the 30 pound for the butt section it was uh, 0 0.027 in diameter, the 25 is 0 0.024, the 20 pound is 0 0.021, so we're going down to 3 thousandths increments, 0 0.018 for the 16, 0 0.015 for the 12, and now we're going to put 18 pound Seaguar Grand Max fluorocarbon on there and that is 0 0.012. So we have an equal diameter breakdown all the way through the fly line leader. I love the Cigar Grand Max. I think it's the best tippet floral material there is out there. It's very, very um, smooth to tie knots with. It's super, super abrasive and you have a high breaking strength for the actual diameter. So I'm going to go with the 12 pound. I'm going to 12 pound Rio Mono, I'm going to actually tie uh, six turns and then seven turns on the Grand Max. We're almost done here. A little open bowl is nice to do this as well. It's easy to apply the power that you need. And so I was landing some fish yesterday without even getting them on the reel and full stride stripping them in with these leaders and they were not breaking. And they were laying out straight into 20 mile an hour winds even though they're 12 to 13 feet long. They have huge power distribution from the fly line because it's such an equal transition of taper all the way down to the fly. So there's my bonefish leader, guys. Try this recipe and I guarantee you're gonna have a leader you're gonna love for life.